everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Lady Luck herself and today we are going to be talking about my main squeeze, Princess Peach, and I will be your guide as we go into her history about how she came to prominence in Smash. Let's get started. You might not expect it, but Princess Peach is one of the most unique, exceptional, and interesting characters in Smash history. Her float mechanic, her RNG flavored turnips, her heavy hits, hard combos, and her floatiness make her unlike most archetypes and fighters in the game. Peach's first appearance was in Super Smash Bros. Melee, where she was a natural addition. Not only was she an iconic character, but she was one of the very few women in a Nintendo franchise, and the only one that was a full-on pink princess. So she fit Nintendo's goal to appeal to a wider player base pretty well. And she gave the design team a lot of room to work their magic. She hadn't been playable in a ton of games, so there was a lot of room for creative interpretation. The creativity really shines through in Melee. For starters, there's Float. Peach's option to stay in the air opens up entirely new combo trees. It also opens up edge guards and recoveries as well. Then there are turnips. These vegetables define Peach's advantage state in neutral. The turnips allow her to zone, wall off parts of the stage, edge guard opponents, and even stall. Pressuring her opponents to approach, lest the random number generator gives her a lightsaber. <laughs> the float and turnip alone gave Melee Peach tremendous depth. Because of that depth, Peach has long attracted some of Melee's most intelligent and skilled competitors. And Melee's greatest of all time, but we'll get to that. First, let's get to ProGuides.com. That's right, it's time to pop open a new tab and float on over to one of the best places for online Smash learning. ProGuides.com has got courses with pros, live coaching sessions, and even a Discord to help find friendlies. Okay now, let's get back to Smash's earliest days, where Peach was a force. By the time Melee's competitive scene had fully formed in 2005, Melee had four very successful Peach mains. There was Wife from the East Coast. He was one half of the best doubles teams, the Newlyweds, and he was the best Peach when it came to the Marth matchup, coming inches away from upsetting Ken at MLG Atlanta in 2005. Then there was Mikael and Kai from Japan. Mikael only played briefly, but got fifth at Jack Garden Tournament, Japan's earliest major. He beat top players like Izai and Rain along the way by optimizing Peach's advantage state, chain grabbing and trapping opponents in the corner. Kai would travel more and get third at MLG San Francisco in 2005, though he'd also use Fox. However, the best early Peach player was Sastrofer. Most impressively, he got second at Melee FC Diamond 3, arguably Melee's first ever super major. At that tournament, he beat Chudat's Ice Climbers so thoroughly that he helped establish Peach as one of the character's worst matchups. <laughs> Chudat switched to Young Link whenever they played after that. Sastrofer wasn't as flashy as he was smart. He used Peach's elusive float movement and fast moves to bait opponents in, where he'd land a solid aerial or a down smash. Down smash was especially devastating in the early meta when players didn't know how to avoid taking full damage. Around 2007, a lot of the old guards started retiring. However, their legacy was clear on the tier list where Peach landed somewhere in the top 5 for the first 9 months of the Smash Backrooms tier list. It didn't take long for Peach's player base to rebuild either. All it would take was a tournament called Genesis. At Genesis, a rising European talent named Armada would make his international debut. And what a debut it was! Armada was simultaneously incredibly smart and technically proficient. His turnip usage was particularly nuts, making his advantage state very unpredictable. And even then, in the earliest stages of his career, he had that touch of RNG magic. Armada was incredibly slippery and disadvantaged as well, utilizing Peach's parasol, float, and air mobility better than anyone had. It all came together for a brilliant performance where he beat Mewtwo King and Mango on winner's side and set up for a showdown and grand finals against Mango. In game one, he put on a show. He's like, hey Mango, welcome to physics, where are you at? Beating the birds so badly that he forced Mango onto Puff, where Mango took the tournament and showed Melee Peach's biggest weakness. While many top and high tiers have losing matchups, few have won as unfavorable as Peach Puff. Puff shuts down a lot of Peach's preferred options. The melodic pink death orb can easily dodge Peach's turnips, outmaneuver floats, and even edge guards. It was so rough that like Chudat, Armada learned Young Link to deal with Puff. And later, he'd have to pick up Fox. But at his peak, Armada was primarily a Peach player. That peak didn't begin immediately after Genesis though. Armada had tough competition from the other five gods, Mango in particular. It wasn't until Genesis 2 that Armada's era would begin. After that, 
From April 2011 all the way to January 2013, Armada would get the gold at every major tournament he entered. He was so dominant that the only player who could defeat him was himself. <laughs> he got burnt out and retired after EVO 2013. Armada's first run with Peach inspired the Peach player base and brought out new Peach mains. In fact, if you look at his old Genesis sets, you can find a glimpse into the future of the Peach meta. Here's Ryobead, one of the best Peach players in the world in 2020, praising Armada some 8 years ago. And Armada wasn't even done. He'd come back in 2014 and spend the year shaking off the rust and picking up Fox. While Fox became a vital part of his play, his Peach was still his main. He kept Fox mostly for Puff and for players like Leffen and Plup who did well against Peach. Armada would fall off late 2017 and 2018, but Armada was so good that falling off meant ranking second or third instead of first. Armada may have even been too good. Some people think he carried Peach and that she's more of a mid-tier than a high-tier. However, some spacey players have argued that his success and consistency is because of the princess. Leffen and Mango both argue that floaties are more consistent in tournament play. That might sound like Corneria propaganda, but it makes sense. Fox and Falco can SD off of tiny technical errors. Peach and Puff are considered more forgiving. Plus, their floats give them the rare ability to slow melee down and take a breath. Peach also has a good matchup chart outside of Puff. She arguably loses to every top tier, but they're close to even. And she solidly beats every mid and low tier. Plus, it's considerably harder for her to get wobbled, which happens to the best of us. Even with Armada gone, Peach is thriving. There are multiple highly ranked Peaches across the world, including Triff in Europe, Shippu in Japan, Lloyd, Kalamazu, Bladewise, Polish, and Ryobeat in the US. Lloyd in particular broke new ground for Peach by beating Hungrybox's Puff, something that hadn't been done in literal years. Peach's legacy as a unique and deep character would persist into Brawl, although she wouldn't do as well. The new best Peach in the world was probably Ki from Japan. Ki made great use of her intense aerial pressure and used her float, jumps, and dashes to be very evasive and neutral. Ki really showed how sharp the character's movement could be. However, she'd taken a big hit to her kill power. The ledges and melee suited Peach well, letting her cover them with turnips and aerials. But Brawl's recoveries and mechanics didn't allow for as much edge guarding. Then there was staling. Move staling in Brawl was rough for characters like Peach, who easily staled out her fair, one of her best kill options and moves in the neutral. Combine all that with nerfs to Peach's knockback, and the character struggled to kill, all while dying very early herself. Peach also had rough matchups into Mennonite and Snake, two very relevant characters. He made both matchups look doable, but even he struggled to win full sets against Japan's best Meta Knights, and Snake's up tilt was brutal for Peach. On the flip side, Peach did have one important good matchup, Ice Climbers. Peach's float made getting a grab hard for Ices, and her floating aerials as well as turnips were great for separating and edge guarding the climbers. Ki could consistently beat 9B, the best Ice Climber main and one of the best players in the world. In addition to Ki, Slayer Z, Elmatic, and Nicole did well with the character in the US. Slayer Z and Ki both have several nice wins and placings in national tournaments, but nothing like the super major wins Armada had. This left Peach in a contested mid-tier. Some think she lacks the firepower, but others feel that her advanced techniques and strong neutral tools makes her an underutilized, unoptimized high tier. In Smash 4, Peach's situation was pretty similar, despite a lot of things changing. Smash 4 buffed Peach's kill power and made her pretty fast. However, her damage took quite a hit. Her aerials did less and her turnip pool was slower and didn't have any lag-canceling tech. Smash 4 also buffed the frame data on most grounded moves but nerfed the frame data on most aerials. The exception being up air, which got turned into a fast, beautiful rainbow that juggles you to death. Japanese Peach main Yumeki developed this into the Yumeki Rainbow, which, if you ask our scriptwriter, should have been called the Death by a Thousand Rainbows. Despite the changes, Peach held the same position in the meta. Just like Brawl, she was an underutilized mid to high tier with some very good and very bad matchups. Peach went even with Bayonetta, a big feat in Smash 4. But she got pretty solidly beat by Cloud and Diddy Kong, if not a few other top tiers with great advantage states. Peach was also as technically demanding and rewarding as ever. Her movement required a lot of precision, but was incredibly ambiguous and flexible if done right. In the early days, her brawl mains carried forward into Smash 4 and her player base began to expand to new notables and rising talents from the late brawl era, like Ling Ling, Razo, Maru, Mute Ace, Yumeki, and Samsora. Smash 4's best Peach would initially be Slayer Z, 
who would then hand the crown over to Samsora. Samsora would optimize Peach to new levels and wow audience at the end of Smash 4's lifespan, getting second at Super Smash Con. In particular, his elusive movement, fast reactions, and hard punishes fared great against Bayonetta's. However, some matchups forced him to switch characters. Samsora needed to use Rosalina to beat Tweak's Diddy Kong. Samsora ended Smash 4 ranked 12th and made a solid argument for Peach's ability in Smash 4. In Ultimate, Peach would speak for herself. This character is top 5 in the game for many people. In Ultimate, Peach combines the best parts of her Brawl and Smash 4 iterations. She has the great damage, grounded options, and KO power from Smash 4, as well as the great aerial frame data and hitboxes from Brawl. Edge guarding is back on the menu in Ultimate as well, which is fantastic for Peach. While this does mean Peach can be edge guarded, her disadvantage as a whole may be the best it's ever been. She has solid out of shield options, her float is hard to punish, her down air is a great landing tool, and her quick aerials in side B make edge guarding dangerous. This isn't even talking about the turn up, which is much faster and solid out of shield, jump, or float. As far as downsides go, Peach's survivability is the main one. She dies very early, being both light and floaty. She also doesn't have the best range, so disjoints can be a hassle. Her turnips help a bit, but not massively. This means Peach can suffer from some weirdly bad matchups for being such a good character. Mr. Game & Watch is maybe the best example. Gaming's foxiest grandpa can easily anti-air and juggle Peach, as well as escape her shield pressure. Peach does well against great characters, but she has to work weirdly hard to beat a handful of characters lower on the tier list. Which is maybe why Peach mains like Samsora and Mute Ace underrate the character. However they underrate the princess, she's always had the results to prove her tierless hegemony. Samsora and Mute Ace got 2nd and 5th at Smash Conference United, one of Ultimate's early big tournaments. At SC United, Samsora extended his Smash 4 Peach fundamentals into Ultimate pretty quickly showcasing the character's insane damage and kill potential. Samsora didn't stop there, consistently getting great results and often only losing to MK Leo or another member of the top 10. Samsora, Mudeis, and Yumeki all made the global rankings and in turn, Nintendo gave Peach slight nerfs. <laughs> oh. Mostly reducing her kill power via fair and back throw. They also made her side be more vulnerable on impact. However, the nerfs didn't do too much. In fact, just a few months later, Peach would get her biggest win since Armada. At Shine 2019, Samsora would defeat MKLeo's Joker in winners and grand finals. Samsora outplaced MKLeo's Joker in his prime, a feat very, very few players can match. Samsora managed it by optimizing Peach's movement, using float and jumps to dodge and counter hit Arsene, and by channeling his inner Armada and edge guarding masterfully with turnips and float aerials. It hasn't taken long for Peach to gain a whole court's worth of followers. There are now notable Peaches in every major region. Yumeki, Ki, and TKM in Japan, Maru and Dia in Europe, Leaf in Mexico, and Ling Ling, Razo, and Blazing Pasta in the US. And funnily enough, many of the players who switched from Peach to Bayonetta in Smash 4 would go from Bayo to Peach in Ultimate. This Toadstool totalitarian has one of the highest presences on the regional power rankings. That's pretty surprising, given she's very hard to play. This is also only the beginning. Peach has insane potential in Ultimate. Her Z-Drop, Late Hit Aerial, and Float Cancel combos haven't even been fully optimized yet. Given that she's got a serious and strong player base as well, Peach's future in Ultimate is very bright. Over time, we've seen Peach gradually shift from the very calculating and tricky high tier she was in Melee to the top tier, hyper-technical, high damage rushdown queen she is today. And through it all, she's stayed one of Smash's most exceptional characters. Kind of fitting for the queen of Nintendo, don't you think?